They cannot be that relaxed here today in this all-important seventh ball game. As you said a moment ago, the entire season is wrapped up into one ball game here today. A lot of these fellas have been through it before. Some of them are going through it for the first time. But the tension has got to be the same for everybody. This is it, and they all feel it. And I think this feeling even prevails through this tremendous crowd here today. As the Giants taking the field just a moment ago, they let out a tremendous roar, of course, to the hometown team, but they feel the tension right here in the stands. Tony uh, Cuba stepping in to lead off for the Yankees here in the first inning. Time for get ready, and here's the first pitch of the ball game. He tries to bust. One strike to Cuba. Tony has a 280 batting average. He's been to the play 25 times, and he has seven hits. Tony has no home run. He's batted in one run. This will be the third meeting in this series between Sanford and Terry. They've won one game each. Sanford won here in Candlestick and Ralph back in New York. A pitch to Cuba. Outside, a fastball off the corner. One ball, one strike. In the first two ball games that Sanford pitched, he was behind the batter a lot, but he didn't walk many. Coming in with a 2-0 and o pitch, most of the time with good pitches. Here's the pitch. Outside, another fast ball in the corner. Ball two in strike one. It'll be Kubak, Richardson, and Tommy Trace for the Yankees here in the first inning. The seventh game of the 1962 World Series. Time for ready. A 2-1 pitch. Here's a fly ball. It's the center field. Willie Mays moving in. He's there and he makes the catch. Tony Kubak out on the fly to center. Second baseman Bobby Richardson. Bobby's a right handed batter. He has a 160 batting average. Four hits and 25 trips in this series. He has no home runs, no runs tied in. Giants playing straight away and not too deep. Everybody's going to play shallow and left field today. Here's a pitch to Bobby. Ball, it's inside a curve ball. Mr. Corner. One ball and a strike. Willie McCovey is in left field for the Giants. May is in center, and Felipe Lou playing in right field today. Sanford into the windup. Here's the one and open. Curve down low. Got this one over the plate for too low. Ball two in our strike. Sanford didn't like to call on it too much. Stopped and looked into Stan Lambert. Just on the first two hitters, George, and we might be able to get a pattern and through nothing but fast forward to two back, nothing but serves to Richardson. Here's the pitch, just down low, a fastball, low at hand. Three and out of Bobby. Tommy Trace, the left fielder, is waiting in the on deck circle. Yankees batting in the first inning with one out and no one on. A ball three and a no strike down. And for taking a little time, get ready. Here's the pitch. Down low, he walks in. Bobby Richardson draws a walk. He'll put a runner at first base with one out. And the batter will be Tom Trace, the left fielder. Tom's batting average close to 333 for this series. He's hit 24 trips. Tommy has one home run and four runs that right in. A home run, a three run homer coming against Sanford at Yankee Stadium. Trace is a quick batter. He's batting left handed against Sanford. Here's the pitch. Gavin Ford is playing in close at third. He's about even with the bag. The Peta holds against the runner at first. And both Pagan and Diller have moved in a couple of steps. They are cheating on the double play. Here's the one strike there. Outside. This one just off the corner. Sanford is aiming everything for the outside part of the play. He just handed batter. One ball and one strike. Got a couple of spots that will help him out if he can get him to hit that ball into the left field because left center field will be a real tough job. It went out of here the way that wind is going. Sanford checks his runner. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. He swings and hits the top fly behind third. Gavin Ford is chasing it. He's over near the stands and he makes it. Gavin Ford making a fine play. As he stays with that high top fly. Caught it and crashed into the barrier. 
Uh, uh, sit down. And uh, the batter will be Mickey Mantle. George, you remember in the ball game over here, uh, the second one, Tom Haller made some five catches with some ball ball this day anyway. Anything that's hit towards the third base line, you better chase it because it'll blow back in play. Mantle with an 091 batting average. He's been to the plate 22 times. He has two hits. Mickey has no home runs in this series, no runs batted in. He's batting left-hander against Sanford. Here's a quick throw to first. Richardson back and down. Bobby at first base with two outs here in the first inning. There's no score. Sanford gets that. A pitch to Mantle. Ball, it's down low. One ball and no strike. Some of the riders were sitting out on the bench before the ball game about using the same lineup every day. Ralph said, one thing I found out early in my managing career is go with the best you have every day. Don't shuffle the lineup around. Just put the best you've got in there and play them. One ball, no strike. The pitch to Mickey. Strike, he got a fastball over him. Right down the middle of that one. The Giants are deep and around to the right for now. A bright, sunshiny afternoon. A strong breeze blowing in from left field. We said before the wind normally quiet here until about 3 o'clock, but today it started moving in about 10 o'clock this morning. Here's the pitch to Mickey. He swings and hits a high fly ball to left field. Willie McCovey is waiting on it. He'll wait. No runs, no hits, no arrows, one man left. And the score at the end of the first half of the first inning, the Yankees nothing with the Giants coming to bat. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. Excuse me, sir, but what's that they're raising up there? That's the prime rate. Going up today. Oh, I see. Some days it goes up, some days it goes down. And what exactly does the prime rate do? I'm most it's scared people sell it. Little high. If the bank's prime rate is scaring you out of a new car, ask your GM dealer about GMAC. GMAC has financing right now at rates that make sense. So get that new Chevy, Pontiac, Old, Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck you want with help from GMAC. The financing people from General Motors. You're long to die of thirst this summer if it has to depend on the weather to get the water it needs. So be sure you've got quality hoses you can depend on from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you True Value Nylon Reinforced Vinyl Hoses are designed to stand up to the heat and remain flexible in cold weather. And right now you can get their 60-foot True Value Hose for $9.99 or the super rugged 75-foot length for $14.99. Both have 5 8 inch inner diameter and are available only from participating True Value Hardware Stores. And now, more action from Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. Well, no scores. We go into the bottom of the first inning. It'll be Felipe Lou to lead off for the Giants. He'll be followed by the second baseman, Chuck Miller, and then the center fielder, Willie Mays. Ralph Perry, completing the Cuomo coffee. Elson Howard goes down to second with a throw, and we're ready to go. Alou, a right-handed batter, has a 318 batting average. Seven hits and 22 sets. Alou has batted in one run. <laughs> a very large and enthusiastic crowd on the end here today, and we wish to say, giant rooters here. Ralph Terry gets ready. A pitch to Alou. He swings and pops it up behind the plate. Chris Howard coming back. It's going to be out of play. Let's come back in the crowd. One strike to a lose. Perry won 23 ball games and lost 12 during the regular season. And as he said previously, he's won one and lost one in this World Series. A lose taking a little time before he gets back in. Leap right down on the end of the bat. Perry into the windup. The pitch. He swings and hits a pop fly outside of first base. Gowan is over there waiting in the sight. Moose was battling the high sky on that one. Felipe Lou fouls to the first baseman. Coming up the second baseman, Chuck Hiller. 
Ellie has a 176 batting average, three hits in this series, and 17 trips. Strong right-handed batter. Here's the pitch. Foul ball is back on the screen. One strike. Sanford using the little pitch motion on that pitch the first time he's used it today, but he's used it a lot throughout this series. I was talking to some of the Yankees on the plane coming out here from New York, and they said it was effective. Very effective, especially with two strikes. George is also a telltale for manager Alvin Dark when he gets sloppy with the leg movements uh, to tip off his getting tired. The pitch to Howard. There's a ground ball hit to the third baseman. Davenport flips it over to first. He's out. Elston Howard goes out. Davenport to Cepeda. Up two down, and the batter will be Bill Cowan. <laughs> Bill has a 214 batting average. He has three hits and 14 trips. One run batted in. Bill right down on the end of the bat. Sanford gets ready. Here's the first pitch. Ball, it's inside. One ball and no strike. To give you an idea how hard the wind is blowing in from left field, Scarron unloaded one in batting practice that looked like it was going into the base, and it hit the top of the fence and bounded back. The one and open. A swing and a foul tip. And falling right at the plate. One ball, one strike. We're in the top of the second inning. There's no score in the ball game. Two outs with no one on. Howard taking a little time. That ball might have hit him on the hand. Didn't miss him, Joyce, and he walked out to uh, get his bearing back as he put the ball to Stanford. Now he'll take a little bit of time given the sign. One ball, one strike to Scowling. Stanford gets ready. Here's the pitch. Curve ball, it's up high. Ball two and strike one. Stanford had great success against Howard and Scowling at Yankee Stadium. He was keeping the curve ball low and on the outside part of the plate. This is a good way to pick anybody, Joe. Oh, I can announce it out all those guys you keep it there. Stanford taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the 2 1 pitch. He swings and bounces his foul off to the left. I'm leaving the count at 2 and 2. How about those clubhouse meetings when you get stuck? They always say, well, keep that fastball up and in before you get in and that curveball down. You've got to get it down, though. And of course, it's always high and high, low and away, which is the perfect picking pattern. You could do that, that Hall of Fame would really be crowded. With pitches. No hitters, definitely not. The only hitter that can hit that curveball low and outside, like Bob Skinner said, that's the ball players have gone to announce and They can hit that curveball low and outside. A ball two and a strike two count to Scowling. Sanford taking too much time to do Bill, so he steps out. Moose just takes one step out of the box and looks out to Sanford, and this to say, what's the reason for the delay? Now he's back in. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Inside, he got the fastball too close. Three and two to Bill. Two outs with no one on. Here in the top of the second inning, there's no score. The seventh and final game of this 1962 World Series. Sanford ready. The pitch. There's a ground ball. It's slowly to the shortstop, but Don has it to throw the first and down. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this.
Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 7 of the 1962 World Series, the New York Yankees versus the San Francisco Giants. Now we move along into the bottom of the second inning. No score in the ball game. Willie McCovey will lead off for the Giants. He'll be followed by Orlando Cepeda and then the catcher, Tom Hallett. It's Frankfurt against Perry here today in the seventh inning. This is meeting for the third time in this World Series. They each have a win. McCovey, a big left-handed batter, has a one and two batting average. Willie has two hits and three and eleven trips. Has one home run and one run batted in. The homer is coming against Terry here at Candlestick Park. The Yankees move deep and far to the right for McCovey. Here's the first pitch. Ball outside. One ball and outside. Terry, of course, will be trying to keep everything away from Willie. He'll want to hit that outside corner. McCovey looking for something inside that he can pull down that right field line. Here's the one and open. pitch. He swings and hops it up outside of first base. Here's Howard chasing it along with Sauer. Elston Howard is trying to keep the on it. He does. A tough play for Howard. He was looking right up into the sun over near the giant dugout, but he made the catch. Well, he's one away, and the batter will be Orlando Cepeda. Orlando's batting average of 188. He has three hits in 16 trips. All three of Orlando's hits coming in yesterday's game. He has two runs batted in. Very ready. The pitch. There's a ground ball hit down the third baseline. It's foul. Boy, you're moving across the line. A one strike count. Orlando was having some fun in the clubhouse after the game, uh, sitting with the newspaper man. And how come uh, they waited until yesterday to come around? He said, I've been with the club all World Series. Nobody come around. Of course, somebody just finally honestly gave the answer. He said, keep hitting him. He'll be around. Don't hit him. We'll see you. Here's a one strike pitch. Curve. It's in the dirt. Elston Howard goes down on both knees to block this one. One ball, one strike. The Yankees gave him a little bit to right center. Yankee Mantle just a little bit to the right of second base. Deep in the outfield. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two. He tucks the corner with a good hard slider. One ball, two strikes. The player gets very deep in the box. Are you ready? The one, two, fifth. Curve down low. I believe in the count is two and two. Bottom of the second inning. There's one out with no one on. There's no score in the ball game. Only one base runner so far in this game. Bobby Richardson drew a walk in the first inning. Terry looking in. Here's the two, two, fifth. He swings and foul tips it right into the middle of Elston Howard. A strikeout for Ralph Terry. That's two down, and the batter will be the catcher, Tom Howard. Tom has a 364 batting average, four hits and 11 trips. Just one home run and three runs batted in. Tom's a tall left-handed batter. Terry into the windup. Here's the pitch. Right, he's up the fastball over the corner. A one-strike count to Tom Howard, batting in the second inning with two outs and no one on. The Yankees nothing and the Giants nothing. Terry pounds his glove. Here's the pitch. High top fly behind shortstop. Kubek drifts him back, saves his eyes. He's got it besides the guard. Tom Howard pops to the shortstop. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of two, the Giants nothing, the Yankees nothing. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC Radio Network. NBC Radio Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast. Game 7 of 1962, featuring superstars Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris. At the end of two, there's no score. 
For the Yankees, no runs, no hits, no errors. For the Giants, no runs, no hits, no errors. It will be Cletus Boyer to lead off. He'll be followed by Ralph Perry and then Tony Kubek. Jack Sanford still taking the form up, Dawson. Jack was a little slow getting out to the mound. Tom Howard makes the throw down to second base. Cleet Boyer steps in. We're ready to go here in the top of the third inning. Boy, this is it. All the pitchers are in the bullpen today. Even Billy Pierce for the Giants and Whitey Ford. Boy, the Yankees both said they would be ready to go again today. Boy, you're a right-handed batter. He's a 278 batting average. We've had five hits in the series and 18 trips. Here's a line drive to right. A little is there. Boy, you hit that one like a bullet. That's straight to a little in right field. And the batter will be Ralph Perry. Here's Ralph coming on. He's on deck circle. He's got the rods on his hand. Willie Mays is the quarterback as far as the outfield can They're moving the guys around. He's just moving a cover here. And Willie played pretty deep for just about everybody. With Ralph Perry up there, Willie Mays wanting McCovey to move in because that wind is blowing directly in. It's a real tough job. Hit one hard in the left field to get over his head. Perry, a right-handed batter. Sanford ready. Here's the first pitch. Strike. He's got a fastball right down the middle. A one-strike count to Ralph Perry. Batting with one out and no one on in the third inning. No score in the ball game. Sanford looking in. Here's the pitch. Strike two. He caught the corner with a strike. Nice seat down. Giants have shortened up all around. McCovey, Mays, and Alou shortened up and playing Ralph a little bit to right field. Sanford checks the sign. Here's the two strike pitch. A swing of it. He tried to check it, but he's gone too far on the low curveball. Perry goes down swinging. It's the first strikeout in the ball game for Sanford. And the batter will be Tony Kubek. Tony sent a fly ball to Willie Mays his first time at bat. Tony, a left-handed batter. Sanford ready. Here's the first pitch. A swing and a miss. A low curve at the knee. One strike to Kubek. Umpires today, Sam Landis is behind the plate, Jim Honachit at first base, Al Barlick at second base, Charlie Berry at third, Jim Burkhardt and Hank Stewart down the line. Here's a fastball outside. One ball and one strike to two back. Jim Burkhardt down the left field line and Hank Stewart down the right field line. Sanford gets ready. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside again, trying to catch the corner with a fastball. Ball two and strike one. It'll be a job for Kubek to try to hit a ball between McCovey and the line in left field. McCovey really caught in that line as if he wants to give Willie Mays as much running room as possible, George. Sanford into the windup. The 2-1 pitch. There's a ground ball to left field. A solid base hit for Kubek as he punched an outside fastball between Davenport and Pagan in the left field. That's the first hit of the ball game. With the runner at first base with two outs. And the batter will be Bobby Richardson. Bobby drew a walk his first time at bat. Sanford wanted a new baseball. After two back punched that one to left field. Sam Landis makes his change. Keep an eye on Kubek at first base. He might be running here with two outs. He's thrown out. The Yankees would still have Bobby Richardson to lead off in the next inning. Here's the pitch. Ball, oh, it's up high. Bobby was ready to bunt. Shortened up. Took the high pitch. One ball and no strike. Davenport has moved in close to third. Jimmy is playing about even with the bag right now. A scoreless ball game. We're in the top of the third inning. Time for 
that just stopped? It's the one and open. Inside. Hot ball in on the fifth. Ball two and inside. Jack has been having trouble getting the ball over to Bobby Richardson. He walked in his first time at that on a 3 1 pitch. Now he's behind with a ball two and a no strike count. Got Texas runner at first base. Quick throw to first. Two back back in time. with a line drive to right. Here he struck out, and Kubek single the left field. Here's the pitch. Right, he got the fastball. Good throw to first. Uh, Kubek back in time. Tony Swift. Power made a wide throw, a good throw, would have had him at first base as Kubek whipped. Bell trying to get back to first base, and then he had to crawl to the bag. But Howard's throw was wide, and Orlando Cepeda had no chance to put the bag on him. for the other base runners and Kubek wasn't really going anywhere. He was just trying to get back to first base. So he's putting in not solid. Here's the pitch to Richardson. Inside. He kept his swing on a high inside fastball. Three and one to Bobby. Richardson out of the box for a moment looking down to third where he checked with Frankie Sarsetti to see if the hit sign is on for this 3-1 pitch. He's going outside too like you know that runner's going to break up that infield because he can pick his spot. Man forgets that. Here's the pitch. Down low, he walks him. Bobby Richardson walks again. A two walks given up by Stanford both times. It's been Bobby. So the Yankees have runners at first and second with two outs. And the batter will be Tommy Stretch, the left fielder. Tommy's 0 for 1. He fouled to Davenport. He's first out of that. Now, this is the first threat of the ball game. Two on with two out. Giant play straight, pretty much straight away. Sanford gets up. Here's the first pitch. He swings and hits a high top fly down the left field line. Gavin Ford is chasing it along with McCurdy, but it's going back in the crowd. A high top fly down the left field line near the giant bullpen. The wind moving that one right back into the crowd. A one strike count to Tommy Trey. Tommy has eight hits in this series. Kubek had seven going into this ball game. He's singled in this inning, so he's all tied with Tommy for a number of hits. Sanford taking a little time as he looks in. Boy, he doesn't want to make a mistake here. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. One and one to Trace. It was a three-run homer by Trace in Yankee Stadium that beat Stanford in the fifth game of the series. A three-run homer coming with a score tied at 2-2. Tommy tilts about a little bit as he waits. Here's the one-one pitch. Ball, it's up out. Ball two in sight one. Boy, you can hear the rumble through this crowd every time Sanford delivers a bad pitch. Mickey Mantle is in the on-deck circle, Jill. You can bet that's one thing that Howard reminded Sanford about as he went out to talk to him. The one defense that you can't come up with is the one for the base on balls. And with the wind the way it is here in this ballpark, you want him to hit the ball because right now it's blowing directly in. And it's not going to help any ball or hit anywhere. It's going to hurt it. And unless you get that ball in that strike zone, you're going to be in serious trouble. Fan forgets that. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Ball outside, way outside. 3 and 1 to Tommy Trey. Sanford is picking high today. That is something unusual for him. In the first two games, he was low, Joe. Right. And the two trip offs, as far as the. Pitching to Sanford is the right motion to get sloppy with that or get the ball off. It's an indication that he's not really sharp. And he has to pitch down with everything. Jack taking a little time as he looks in. Yankees have runners at first and second with two outs. Here's the 3 1 pitch. Right two. Off the outside corner with a fastball. On the corner as he threaded the middle. 
two to Tommy Craig. The runners will be moving three two and two out. Two back at second base, Bobby Richardson at first base. Sanford gets that. He whirls to throw to second. But holds the ball as nobody's going over to cover. For the pickoff play at second base yesterday that did not work was a vital play in the ball game. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hit to the second baseman. Hiller has it. Here's the flip to first. Tommy There were no uh, two men left, and the score at the end of the first half of third inning, the Giants nothing, the Yankees nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. Hi, Pat Summerall to remind you that good household help is hard to find, except at True Value Hardware Stores. There you'll find a selection of quality designed Rubbermaid products to provide helpful convenience all over the house. Use Rubbermaid stackable storage bins to organize kitchen utensils. Or in the family room to store small toys and sewing notions. Rubbermaid shower accessories will help keep bathrooms looking neat. Plus, you'll find durable Rubbermaid pictures, waste baskets, and more at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. <laughs> Not only was the win 
Well, with a high sky and the sun here, and he chased it over near the sand, and he finally overran the ball. It fell behind him. Chief Bobby said to look through it just how close he was to those sands. Uh, it's a tough thing to get familiar with it because it went through the warning track, which is some eight or nine feet from the uh, sands, and you can feel that gravel on your feet. You're really not sure where you are. And there's a lot of room to roam here, and I tell you, you've got to run a few feet. You can get lost, and Bobby had all kinds of problems on that one. There's the two-two pitch. A swing and a foul tip. This one comes out of the middle. Now he's coming behind the plate. Still two and two. Jimmy Davenport, the leadoff man for the Giants in the bottom of the third inning. Right again. Boy, he's made some great plays at third base throughout this series. It's a foul ball. It'll be out of play. And coming back into the upper deck. A strike two down. Jimmy made one good play today. Might have been in self-defense as Roger Merritt slammed a bullet at him at third base. He got the glove up and down. Very ready. The pitch. Foul ball. He checked his swing. Ball hit his back. Failed over the giant dugout back into the lower deck. No strike, too. Well, in the bottom of the third inning, there's no score in the ball game. Jimmy Davenport, the leadoff man for the Giants. Terry into the windup. Here's the pitch. Inside, he pushed him back. One ball, two strikes. Terry has thrown mostly fastballs today. He will throw a lot of slow curves before the afternoon is over. Here's the one two pitch. Fastball hit on the ground foul. Still a ball and two strikes. You know, I think the wind might uh, affect the pitch in some way. I think pitchers like to throw the curves into the wind, don't they? When it's falling away, it is because you get that big break and you don't have good control of it. I know as Terry, we mentioned it, he came out mighty, mighty early to warm up. Here's the one-two pitch. It's the curve, it's up high. Two and two to Davenport. Not that good, quick breaker, that, that dive bomber type curve ball. You can still control that pretty well, but it's a big lolly and a big roundhouse curve ball. That's the one that's a little bit of a problem on a day like today. Terry gets ready. Here's the two-two pitch. High fly ball, it's down the right field line. Richardson chasing it along with Merritt. The wind is taking it away from Bobby, and he can't make a play out of it. Bobby was having all kinds of trouble. Not only with the wind, but with a high sky and the sun here, and he chased it over near the sand, and he finally overran the ball. It fell behind it. He probably said to look through it just how close he was to those stands. Uh, it's a tough thing to get familiar with it because it went hit the warning track, which is some eight or nine feet from the uh, stands, and you can feel that gravel on your feet. You're really not sure where you are. And there's a lot of room to roam here, and I tell you, you've got to run a few feet. You can get lost, and Bobby had all kinds of problems on that one. There's the two two bit. A swing and a foul tip. This one comes out of the middle now. He's coming behind the plate. Still two and two. Davenport, the leadoff man for the Giants in the bottom of the third inning. Well, you can hear the rhythmic applause of the Giants fans as they want Davenport to get something going here in the third inning. Ralph Terry delivers another foul ball. This will be out of play. They have no runs on one hit, no errors. The Giants have no runs, no hits, and they have no errors. The Yankees had a threat going from the top of the inning. They had two on with two out, but Tommy Strait bounced to the second baseman to end that one. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hits foul down the third base line. And Davenport making fair hit here in the third inning. Terry has good control. He'll be right around the plate all the time. Keeping these pitches low and away. And Davenport just getting a few something. Jimmy chokes the back, bounces over the plate. A two two pitch. Another foul ball off to the left. Still two and two. Another crowd getting quite a thrill out of this as Davenport has fouled off some seven or eight pitches. It doesn't bother you too much when you catch him and your fellow's trying like Davenport one edge deliberately like a Hewitt or a Harry Walker you to just follow him off to get that base on ball. That kind of bugs you a little bit. 
There he gets ready. The good is it. There's a high fly ball here in the shallow center field. Richardson going out. Now Bobby's calling for it. He's got it. Boy. He has it all good. I and mean, Bobby almost down on one knee as he made the catch on that one. Now it's just a bit disgusting because Mickey thought he wasn't going to catch that ball and that flag just blown directly in and put it right to Bobby Richardson. All players constantly checking with the flag. Because it could be a very embarrassing situation. Bill thinks this win, Joe, is going to be a big factor in this ballgame before it's over. It seemed to die down for a moment, but right now it is really whipping the flags in center field. There's Jose Pagan, the shortstop. Here he delivers the curve. He bounces at the third. Boy, you have it. The throw to first. He's out. Pagan goes out on the first pitch. Third to first. Now well, that's two down. We'll bring up the pitcher, Jack Simon. This is a third round of applause for Sanford. He comes on. Boy, Jack has been quite a pitcher in this World Series. Won the first game, two to nothing. He was tied 2-2 in the second game he pitched going into the eighth inning. Two singles and a home run. And the Yankees won that one 5-3. to three. Ralph Perry delivers. Twice he got the curveball on it. A one strike down. Now Peter Sanford with a lot of respect. He's a pretty good hitter. He swings that bat. Jack choking the bat as he waits on Perry. The pitch. Strike two. Fastball over the outside part of the plate. A two strike count. We're in the bottom of the third inning. There's two outs with no one on. There's no score in the game. The Giants and the Yankees in the seventh game of the 62 World Series. Perry gets ready. Here's the two strike pitch. Wild ball here in the center field. Mickey Mann was waiting on this one. He's got it to side to side. Jack Sanford flying the man with center field. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left, and the score is in the three. The Giants, nothing, the Yankees, nothing. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 7 of the World Series of 1962. Messi Mantle will be the leadoff man in the fourth inning for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Roger Maris and then Elson Howard. Messi flied to left field his first time at bat. That was back in the first inning. Right on the left. Just left handed against the right hander Jack Sanford. Only one hit in this game so far. That was a single to left field by Tony Kubek. Sanford gets ready and here's the big to mantle. Wall in the back. One ball and a strike. While warming up between him and Tom Howard, the catcher was really giving Sanford a low target, hoping that he could uh, get him down. He's been up with all his pitches, and when a fellow is up like that, you try to give as low a target as possible, even out of the strike zone low, to make sure he holds on that ball a little bit longer. Here's the one and out pitch. Right, he's up the corner with this one. One and one. He turns to look to Stan Landis. A ball and a strike to Mantle, leading off for the Yankees in the fourth inning. A scoreless ball game here at Candlestick Park. Another bright, sunshiny afternoon. Not a cloud in the sky here in San Francisco. A calm breeze blowing in from left field, right straight to home plate. Now, at one time, it was blowing across to the corner in right field, but now it's blowing straight into the plate. A pitch to Mickey. There's a pop fly. It'll be out of play coming back in the crowd. Mantle was trying to get out of the way of a high inside fastball. The hit is fast and sails back. So it's one ball and two strikes. Roger Maris is waiting in the on-deck circle. Sanford's taking a lot of time between pitches. Jack is being very careful here today. Still checking his time with Holler. Here's the one two pitch. A swing and a miss. One away, and the batter will be Roger Merritt. Right, and a vicious line drive straight to Davenport. His first time at bat. The 
drives to a deep and far to the right from there. They play him as a pull hitter all the way. Three infielders on the right side. Sanford delivers outside. One ball and no strike. You talk about stacking the deck, Joe. They not only put three infielders on one side, but they pitch him on the outside part of the plate. They put two outfielders behind the three infielders. It's like a convention on that side. It's a 1-0 and pitch. He swings and hits a high fly ball down the left field line. Gavin Ford is chasing him, but this one's going back in the crowd.
278 batting average in the series. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. He was trying to drill the ball past Davenport at third base. Jimmy playing him close. He was not looking for the bunt, but he's going to be ready in case Boyd has dropped one. Sanford looking in. That's taking a lot of time between pitches. That's his runner at first base. The pitch. That's two. That's a slider over the outside corner. A two-strike count to Cleve Boyer. Bill Scowron opened this inning with a ground ball single to left. He's at first base with no one out. Sanford checks the side with Howard. This is a big to sleep. Way outside with this one. Howard hanging that one in the webbing of his mitt. They don't expect Boyer to try to hit that ball to right field. The uh, second baseman Miller is shooting towards the side. The Pagan is kind of protecting that hole between short and third. It'll be Miller who is over near the second base to make the pivot. Boyer is choking the bat as he waits on Sanford. Here's a one-two pitch. He swings and hits a liner to the left hand. He's got the ball over here. Sauron on his way to third. Boyer's going to hold on with a single as Willie Mays grabbed that ball and fired it into second base. On a dry field, that ball would have rolled all the way to the fence. It hit in the wet turf and stopped. Willie Mays picked it up, rifled it into second base, and Boyer holds on with a long single. Jack Sanford, I was talking uh, now with his catcher, hands on his hips. He's a bit disgusted because it was a big high-hanging curveball, and Boyer really jumped on it with a room service pitch, and he just drilled it. I thought it was going to get by as it plugged the gap, but of course, Willie Mays is going to be one of the great ones. He's double play in order by holding Boyer at first base with a real long single, and that serve certainly did stop the call. Uh, oh, yes, he's a runner at first and third. No one out, and the batter will be Ralph Terry. This is the way the Giants are going to play their infield. Davenport, even with the bag at third, he's ready for a play at the plate. The play, of course, holds against the runner at first base. Miller has moved in a couple of steps from second, and Pagan a step or so at shortstop. Here's a pitch to Terry. Ball, it's in tight. One ball and a strike. Feeling both hands up, uh, George. Uh, Stu Miller, a right-hander, and Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, throwing for the Giants. You can bet everybody's going to be ready in this ball game today. No score in the fifth inning. The Yankees are threatening. Here's a pitch to Terry. Inside again. He almost hit him with a fastball. Ball two in that sight. Cowan opened the inning with a ground ball single to left. Quick Boyer followed with a long single in the left center. And the Yankees have runners at first and third with no one out. Sanford gets set. A pitch to Terry. Inside again, another fastball that puts him back. 3 and 0 to Terry. Sanford seems to be laboring a little right now. He was just aiming at this, Joe. Exactly what he was doing. He was aiming at uh, his pattern. has been a uh, wild high. And uh, Howard, I'm sure, when I saw had the pattern one way, like wild high, because he's standing straight up to throw it, and vice versa, if he's bouncing the ball, because he's bending too far and holding on too long. But uh, on this particular wild sequence of carry, he's just been aiming the ball, trying to throw strikes, and hasn't been able to do it. It's a 3 0 pitch. Oh, it's down low. Terry draws a walk. He loads the bases with no one out. And his manager Al got it on the run out to the mound. Well, Sanford seemed to be laboring as he was pitching to Terry, especially on the last two pitches. As Joe pointed out, he was just aiming the ball over the plate. Of course, he didn't get him over, so Terry draws a walk, and that's a big play for the Yankees. And the big danger point to thing is Alvin Dark is trying to protect the chances that uh, your pitcher is letting up. You don't want to let up the throw it right. You want to keep good stuff. And I'm sure that Alvin Dark is going to let him in. He hasn't made any mistake. He's just standing out there talking while the bullpen is getting hot. West Winston is up, and he has just given the sign to Dark that if he wants to make a move, they are ready, but Stanford will stay in. 
And about all the manager says when he comes out in a spot like that is that you've been a fine pitcher all year by throwing that ball hard. Just cut it loose, go in and let it throw strikes. Give the infielders an option and chance to make a play for you. So the bases are loaded with no one out. And the batter will be Tony Kubak. Tony's had one hit and two trips. He slides to center field in the first inning, singled in the third. Manfred looking in to get the sign. This is a pitch to Kubak. Ball outside. One ball in her sight. All the Giants are playing about halfway on the infield with his section of Davenport, who is in even with the bag. Jimmy is ready to make a play at the plate. The play to Hiller and Pagan could go either way. Depends on how hard the ball is hit. If it's hit hard enough for the double play, more than likely they'll go in that direction. Otherwise, they'll be coming to the plate. There's a one and open. Ball way outside with this one. Two and zero to two back. Sanford having a little control problem. Georgia might just go a step further on the defense, and the outfielder is in very shallow, and on the fly ball, with the way that wind is blowing, it might be a problem for Skyler to score. Of course, the Yankees are letting Sanford pitch, and he's falling behind. He's 2 nothing. Let's see, see what Hawking has ordered right here. Sanford into the wind-up, the pitch. Strikes, he's got the fastball over there. Two backs are taking all the way up. With a fastball around the knees. It's a ball two and a strike one count. A scoreless ball game. We're in the fifth inning. The Yankees threatening. The base is loaded. No one out. Sanford ready. Here's a two one pitch. A ground ball hit to the shortstop. They're going for two to second. One out. Back to first. Two back. The ball to Bagan who flips it over to Hillis. And back to Cepeda in time for the double play as Bill Stowen comes in to score, and the Yankees go out in front one to nothing. Warrior moves to third base with two outs, and the batter will be Bobby Richardson. Bobby's been to the plate twice and walked both times. Davenport still playing in close. He'll be watching a bun in this situation. Here's a pitch to Bobby. A swing and a foul from back to the screen. He's putting that ball up, and you can see him take his head uh, out on the mound. Sanford, a bit disgusted because he's been getting that ball up in their eyes. And George, even I, he would take a watch at that high curveball because you just can't order a better pitch in that big, nice, high handed curveball. And when Richardson saw that one, he had a pretty good set at it. They say all the country boys like the high fastball, but I think everybody likes the high fastball. Boy, that's the international piece. <laughs> well, one strike down to Bobby Richardson. Yankees have a runner at third base with two outs. They lose one to nothing in this game. Sanford gets ready. Here's a fist. High pop fly on the infield. The play at first base, moving into foul territory is there. <laughs> One run on three hits. The Yankees know there's one man left. And the score at the end of the first half of their finish. The Yankees won, and the Giants nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. You know, Mr. Howell, this old car uses more gas than anybody else is in town. No. Everything's exciting it in. With all that chrome, it ought to be worth a lot. Yeah, but... But look, who can buy a new car with the prime rate so high? If the bank's prime rate is scaring you out of a new car or truck, ask your GM dealer about UMAC. UMAC has financing right now at rates that make sense. So get that new Chevy, Pontiac, old Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck you want with help from UMAC, the financing people from General Motors. Well, we go into 
the bottom of the fifth inning. Willie McCovey will be the leadoff man. He'll be followed by Orlando Cepeda and then Tom Heller. The Yankees leading in this ball game by a score of one to nothing. Bill Cowan at this ball time. He wants a pair of sunglasses from the Yankee Dad out to that boy moving out. McCovey's also won him again. He fouled to the catcher, Howard, his first time in back. Well, Sanford had the bases loaded with no one out, but he got out of it with only one run, which was about as well as the Giants could hope for. Here's the pitch. Right. Terry delivers the fastball over the outside corner. <laughs> Willie McCovey, a tall left-handed batter. Here's the pitch. One and one to Willie. He'll be followed by Cepeda and then Tom Haller. Bottom of the fifth inning. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. Terry delivers the third. Now pull the string on him and Willie went all the way around. See, when you don't hit a ball, you swing that hard, it does a lot of good because it's got a part in your body that's not, not nice and loose now. What a cut he had a slow curveball. Wow. Terry delivers a fastball. He got it too high. Two and two to McCovey. He's trying to set Willie up for another slow curve. Coming in with a fastball around the letters. Terry sets the time. Here's the two two set. Fastball. He gets it high into the air and the shallow left center field. This first coming in. Still moving in. And he makes the catch. Willie McCovey out on a high fly ball in the left field. One away, and the batter will be the first baseman, Orlando Cepeda. Cepeda was a strikeout pick in the first time, in fact. Yankees leaders. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. So Peter batting with one out and no one on. Terry gets ready. Here's the pitch. Blow curve. He hits it high into the air down the right field line. This one's serving. It's going back into the crowd. Richardson and Maris giving chase. So it's strike two to the fair. Two singles and a walk to load the bases with no one out, and Kubek getting into a double play, getting the run in. Here's the pitch. This one in the dirt. This one just way out in front of the plate. One hop right into the net of Elson Howard. You know, you catch red like you've been doing it all your life, and you're really lucky when you come up with it, and you act like, oh, well, I've been catching it like that all year long. I was trying to play a bad one handed grab. Terry taking a little bit too much time for the fader. Orlando out for a moment. Here's the one-two pitch. He swings and hits a high fly ball into shallow right field. Richardson moving back is there, and Bobby makes the catch. Holding the almost struck. see a lot of white in his glove. As long as you can see that the slow curveball that Terry really helps his fastball a great deal. He's got a good fastball, but with that slow curveball, it sets up his fastball. He's getting, that, uh, getting the ball by the tough hitters like uh, McCuffey and his tobacco hitting behind him. And if you can score, it don't look now, but there's only been one ground ball hit. Uh, as far as an assist for him to, that goes to Boya. There's a bit to Howard it's down low. One ball, that's right. Tom talks to the shortstop his first time at that. Giants batting in the fifth inning. Two outs with no one on. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Here's a one and open. Right. He's got the slow curveball of it. One and one. Now a tall left-handed batter. Terry pounds the ball in his glove. Here's a one-one set. Last ball is in there. Boy, he is threading a needle on the outside corner with a good fastball. 
One ball, two strikes. Howler might have been looking for the curve. There's no indication he was going to swing at the fastball. Perry into the windup. The one, two set. Here's the curve. Bounce right back to the mound. Ralph has it. The throw to first base. He's out. Howler goes out. Pitcher to first. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of five, the Yankees won, and the Giants nothing. Game seven of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game seven of the World Series of 1962. At the end of five, the Yankees have one run on three hits and no errors. The Giants have no runs, no hits, and they have no errors. Ground ball by Hiller in the first to down, and ground ball by Pagan to Boyer, and then ground ball by Tom Howard back to Ralph Perry. The only ground ball is hit off the right hand of the Yankees. And that Sanford got out of a big jam in the fifth, so once again, they're hooked up. Tommy Strike will be the leadoff man for New York. He'll be followed by Nicky Mantle and then Roger Mann. Tommy's over two. He fouled with his third baseman back in the first inning, and he bounced the second in the third inning. Time's it ready, and here's the pitch. High foul ball that will be out of play. And off the third base side. One strike for Tommy. A one-to-nothing ball game. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Clay took the bat as he waits on Sanford. The pitch. He bunched it up in the air. The player is moving in fast and missed the catch. Tommy Stray trying to drag the ball down the first baseline, popped it up. Orlando Cepeda moves into foul territory to make the grab. That's one away, and the batter will be Nicky Mantle. Nicky has slid the left and stuck out in two steps. Yankees won. The Giants nothing during the sixth inning. Here's a pitch to Mantle. Ball down low. One ball, that's right. Boy, Lou is deep in right field and near the line. May is playing just a little bit in the right center, not too much. And McCovey is playing in straightaway left field. They're all deep. Transferred into the windup. The one and oh pitch. Down low, another curve below the new ball, too, in this time. The Yankees picked up a run in the fifth inning. That's been the only scoring in this game. Time for get ready. Here's the 2 and 0 pitch. Upside, one off the corner. 3 and 0 to Mickey. hasn't been hitting him and has a power of mound. You certainly have to be careful. He might turn him loose three and nothing uh, since he can't pick up a quick one. Mickey's right down on the end of the bat waiting. Here's the pitch. Down low. He walked him. I believe he was going to swing at it. He was ready, but the pitch is too low. So Mantle draws a walk. That's the fourth walk given up by Sanford. And the batter is married. Goes down wide and gets up in the giant bullpen now and starts to loosen up. So that is the third pitcher in the bullpen used by manager Alvin Dyson, that old Dell, Stu Miller, and now down wide. Roger Merritt has lined to the third baseman and bounced to the third baseman in two trips. Now at first base with one out here in the sixth inning. Time for gets that. It's a quick throw to first and he's out. Manfred caught him leaning, made a quick snap throw to 
at first, and Cepeda puts the tag on him. The pitch to Maris. Outside. One ball, one strike. Once again, the Giants are in the ship. They have three infielders on the right side. And it's taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Upside again. Just off the corner with a good fastball. Ball two in strike one. Imagine in this spot that Maris will be going to right field. The first two times he was going to left, but batting now with two out to no one on, he has but one thing in mind: that's to try to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Sanford ready. The two runs hit. There's a tap down the first baseline. Cepeda picks it up. The race to the bag. Orlando wins. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the fourth one of the first time to pitch it. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC Radio Network. ideal choice for average lawns because it quickly trims the 10-inch path and weighs just three and a half pounds for less tiring operation. For larger jobs, get the weed or easy trimmer that trims and sweeps a 16-inch path. Both of these time and work savers feature tap-and-go heads and are available at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. NBC Radio Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast, Game 7 of 1962, Featuring superstars Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris. Now we go into the bottom of the sixth inning. The Yankees out in front of the Giants by a score of one to nothing here in the seventh game of the 1962 World Series. Boy, this is it. You play all season long, and you come right down to one big ball game. And another capacity house here in Candlestick Park today, watching this seventh inning. The attendance exactly as was yesterday, George, 43,948. They jammed everybody they could get in yesterday, and they all come back today. And I'll tell you something, Joe, there's a lot of people downtown wanting to come. He said, sir. Jimmy Davenport will lead off for the Giants. He'll be followed by Pagan and then Jack Stanford. Here he delivers. Right. He got the fastball over around the knees. Davenport up to the second baseman his first time at that. He's a right-handed batter. There's a one strike pitch. A curveball hit on the ground foul down the third baseline. And rolling to the bullpen in right field. Left field. A strike two count. Ralph Perry against Jack Sanford. Third meeting in this series for these two pitches. Here's the two strike pitch. Ball. He got it outside. One and two to Davenport. That pitch was close. Perry trying to get Davenport to swing at a bad one. Yankees playing straight away, not too deep. Ralph into the windup. Here's a one-two pitch. High foul ball. This will be out of play. Coming over behind the giant dugout. Still one ball, two strikes. The Yankees picked up a run in the fifth inning. That's been the only scoring in the ball game. They used two singles and a walk to load the bases. Then Kubek hit into a fast double play. Scouring coming in with a run. Here's the pitch. Another foul ball. Almost the same spot. Still one ball, two strikes. Fan 
Landis, the umpire behind the plate, moving out. Throws a new ball out to Ralph Perry. Ralph gets ready to pitch. Curve, it's way up time. I believe in the count, it's two and two. Jimmy Davenport, leadoff man for the Giants in the sixth inning. Jimmy with a 158 batting average. He's been to the plate 20 times in this series and got three hits. He's been a sterling performer at third base for the Giants. Here's the 2 2 pitch. I pop fly outside of first. Garen is chasing. If this is going to be trouble, it is embassy. Back in the first row. Garen and Bobby Richardson chasing it over near the barrier. Landed in the first row. Still two and two to Davenport. You remember Jimmy's first trip he fouled off about eight or nine pitches. And he's right back at it again. Divided. He waits on Terry. There's the 2 2 pitch. Outside. Nelson Howard was ready to fire down to third. He thought he had a tall third strike, but Landis said it was off the corner. So it's 3 and 2 to Davenport. Kelly, taking a little time, walked out in front of the plate, flipped the ball back to Terry. Ball down low. One ball in her sight. A runner 
now first with two outs. We're in the bottom of the sixth. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Terry has just given up his first hit, and the Giants have their first base run in the game. A pitch to a lose. A bouncing ball down the third baseline. Boy, they will have to hurry to throw. He got him. A slow bound to the third. Boyer flips it over to Sharon. No runs on one hit. There were no errors. One man left. And the score at the end of six. The Yankees won and the Giants nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. Now, more action from Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. Well, we're going to the seventh inning. The Yankees in front of the Giants, one to nothing. It'll be Elston Howard to lead off for New York. And we followed by Bill Sharon and then Fleet Boyer. He's been to the plate twice. He bounced to the third baseman in the second inning and popped to the shortstop in the fourth inning. The only scoring in this ball game coming in the fifth inning. The Yankees loaded the bases with no one out on two singles and a walk. And two backs bounced into a double play. The run coming across. One run, three hits, and no errors for New York. No runs on one hit and no errors for the Giants. Sanford taking a little time. Jack with a base runner in the sixth inning. He's a little slow getting back to the mound. Here's the pitch. Ball. It's down low. One ball in this side. Well, you talk about the pressure on the ball game in the seventh game of the series. How about the umpires? Especially the fellow behind the plate, Stan Landis. He's got a lot of important calls to make today. Here's a strike. That ball coming in around the knees. But the old thing, George, uh, when they do the great job, you hardly even know they're out there. You hardly recognize them because of the outstanding job that all of them have done. Here's a 1-1 one -one pick. A high pop fly down the right field line. This is curving back into the crowd. A leap a lose chasing that he had no chance to get it. One ball, two strikes. Howard, Scowlin, and Boyer will be the Yankee batters here in the seventh inning. They lead the Giants one to nothing. Taking a look in to Tom Howard. Well, he's choking the bat a little bit with two strikes. Here's the pitch. Ball, it's in tight. That's ball coming in high and tight. A ball, two, and a strike, two down. <laughs> Giants playing deep and around to the left for Elson Howard. Here's the two two pitch. Outside. He tried to get the corner with a slider. Three and two there, Ellie. Moose Sharon is waiting in the on deck circle. Yankees batting in the seventh inning. They lead one to nothing. No one out, no one on. A full count to the catcher Howard. Here's the pitch. He swings and bounces his foul down the third baseline. Still three and two. with a new baseball, rubbing it out, taking a little time. Jack has been a slow and deliberate pitcher here today in this all-important ball game. Here's the pitch. A ground foul right at the plate. Ball bounced up, hit Howard, and Howard grabbed it on the first hop. Still three and two. Howard talking to himself as he walked away from home plate, and it looked like he had his pitching just didn't hit it. One of the real joys of catching is listening to the conversation he hears when they talk to himself. Hank Sauer, who was with this guy in the day, he's one of the best. He's talking, he's answering himself, and he's always getting on himself for the good. Here's the best. A ten out there. Jack Stanford coming in with a curveball on the 3 2 bit, and Elston Howard strikes out. That's one away, and the batter will be Bill Stout. 
Well, Lewis has had one hit in two trips today. Bounced to the shortstop in the second inning, single in the fifth. Sanford ready. Here's the pitch. It's a high fly ball hit into deep center field. Man is going back. Now he's going to have to come in in the left center. And McCarty is there, finally to make the play. Willie May takes that one all over the outfield. And finally, Willie McCarty at left center made the play. George, I've seen some off-field plays during the first of this year where I'd probably just been watching an old T-Bone movie. One fellow be ready to make the play and see somebody cut in front of him make it, and there you saw Willie ready to make it, and McCovey made it easily. When did the big fight come in? McCovey, that's like he had it all the way, and Mays had been chasing it all over the outfield. Well, he's two down, and the batter will be Fleet Boyer. Fleet's one for two in this game. Takes a strike around the letter. Boyer hit the ball hard both times. He lined a little in right field in the third inning. In the fifth inning, he lined a long single in the left center. On a dry day, it would have been an extra base hit and would have drilled in a run. Here's a ground ball hit up the middle for Don can't get it. He goes into center field. Boyer getting his second hit. A ground ball through the middle to center field. Now, that's a big play for the Yankees, Joe. Get that picture up and out of there. They're bringing that pitcher to the plate here instead of making him a leadoff man in the eighth inning. Well, we're waiting right now for Siri to come on. That's why an eighth spot is always such a tough one, George. You don't get that good uh, ball in if you have a fellow in point position. You have to widen the strike zone, try to drive it in. And a spot like this, you've got to go for the unexpected pitch to get that base hit. And hope you get your pitcher up there and not make the leadoff man out of him. Nice round of applause for Terry if he comes on. Boy, he's been quite a pitcher here today. He has allowed one hit, and that's been the only base runner for the Giants. Boy, you're at first place with two outs. The pitch to Terry. A pass, one ball, and a strike. Ralph struck out in the third inning, and in the fifth inning, he drew a walk. Terry told me before the ball game today he had one big ambition, that's to get a hit from the Terry. Here's the pitch. A ground ball in the left field. That is his base hit. That's out of the reach of Davenport. And Ralph Terry comes through with a ground single to left. So the Yankees, after the first two batters have been retired here in the seventh inning, are threatening. They have runners at first and second. Two outs, and the batter will be Tony Kubek. A tip number five for New York. Kubats had one hit in three trips today. Five in the field in the first inning, single in the third, get into the double play in the fifth. Both times the Giants jumped up again. The left hander is Billy Odell, and the right hander is Don Larson. Two on, two out. Fans are taking a little time as you look in. Here's a pitch to Kubats. Ball, it's up high. One ball and no strike. Sanford has been quite a pitcher here today. I'd say the only difference in this performance today and the other two that he's given in this World Series, he's been high today. He has not been able to get the ball down around the knees. As he would like to do. Here's a 1-0 and pitch. Here's a liner down the left field line. The cover is chasing and it's serving foul back into the crowd. Well, Willie is playing him right over there on the line. One ball, one strike. Kubat will get a lot of balls in the left field. I'll tell you another thing right here, Joe. It's going to be tough for Boyer to score on a base hit to the outfield unless he pulls it into right. Now, Mays and McCovey are both playing in close. Manfred gets that. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a high fly ball hit in the left center field. McCovey and Mays are both there. McCovey is calling for it. He's got it to size the size. No runs on two hits. And left. And of course, he's going to size the size of the size. And he's the size of the size. Game 7 of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. Now listen, but listen quick. Because it comes and goes just like that. The Pennzoil Chaparral, driven by national champion Johnny Rutherford. Here it comes again, all bright and brilliant in its traditional Pennzoil yellow color. That's a $40,000 engine that just roared by, turning out 9,500 torturous RPM. 
does it mile after mile after hard money mile, race after race after race. The Pennzoil Chaparral. It has Pennzoil written on it and Pennzoil in it. Protection for a winner. Pennzoil Motor Oil. Protection for cars like the Chaparral and cars like yours. Ask for it. to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 7 of the World Series of 1962. Now he's going to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Giants trailing the Yankees by a score of one to nothing. It'll be Chuck Killer to lead off for San Francisco. He'll be followed by Willie Mays and then Willie McCovey. The crowd standing here for the seventh inning stretch, and they are singing with the band as they are playing in these kind of deals. Probably the giant fight. Oh, the hard rush to pick it up here on the radio. Chuck Hiller at the bottom. He's 0 for 2 in the game. Here's the pitch. He bites it up in the air. Terry steers it. A good play by Terry. Had the ball gotten over his head, more than likely Hiller would have been on. But Terry, moving back of the mound, reached up and speared the top flat. So there's one away, and the batter is going to <laughs> Willie's off the two, he's flying the left and flying the center in two steps. <laughs> the Yankees keep but around to the left. Or will he may? Terry delivers the curveball. He lines it down the left field line. Trey places into the corner. He got it a one-handed catch by Trey. He caught the ball and went out of our sight. Back into the corner, but he hung on to it in the webbing of his glove. Willie May is making a bid for an extra base hit into the corner in left field. Is robbed on a fine play by Tommy Trey. What's two down? And the batter will be Willie McCovey. Boy, it's amazing how this kid, Tom Strait, has made the move from the infield to the outfield, and he has not missed a step. He has taken it in stride. Which is one of the plays of this series right there. <laughs> Willie McCovey, the batter, Willie has found a catcher and five to left in two steps. Here's the pitch. There's a long foul ball down the right field line. It'll go all the way out of the park. A one strike down for Willie. Bill Stafford, a right hander, and Bud Daly, a left hander, throwing in the bullpen. And the Ralph House wants to keep him ready. Harry gets ready. A pitch to McCovey. Ball down low. He checked his swing on a slow curve. One ball, one strike. The Giants are batting in the seventh inning. There's two outs with no one on. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Here's the one-one pitch. He swings and hits the drive and the deep center. Now he's chasing him. He's getting it. He's trying to get it. All the way to the center. Here's McCarthy going in the second. He's going to try for the second. Oh, he's got it Chance. 
65. A runner at third with two outs. Very ready. Here's the pitch. Cepeda takes the fastball up out. One ball and a strike. Orlando struck out in the second. Off to Bobby Richardson in the fifth inning. Taking a little time, look down to get the time. Here's the one and oh pitch. He swings and hits a high foul of the out of play down the right field line. One ball, one strike. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. We're in the seventh inning. Willie Mosavi is the third base for two outs. It's only the second hit given up by Ralph Perry. Well, the crowd has come alive, as you can hear. They are roaring, wanting to pay to come through. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. A swing and a miss on a bad curveball. He foul kicked it. So Sam Lambert right into the mitt. Terry delivering a low outside curve. That's the play to the bite. One ball, two strikes. Straight away, everybody back on the infield. Here's the one two pitch. Foul ball. Look at the out of play. Terry's trying to get the fastball by him. Evidently figuring that Cepeda would be looking for a curve, but Orlando had a ripple at it. Still one ball, two strikes. Once again, Howard going out to the mound for a conference with Terry. It's going to take a little time right now as he stands on the mound talking to Ralph Terry. Action in the Yankee bullpen. Bill Stafford, a right-hander, and Bud Daly, a left-hander, are throwing. Well, this is it. There's no saving anybody for tomorrow and next week. This is the seventh ball game of the 62 World Series. Terry gets ready. Here's the one, two, six. A swing and a miss in sucking out. The Pater going for a high fastball strikes out. No runs on one hit. There were no errors. One man left. And the score at the end of seven. The Yankees won. The Giants nothing. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this. NBC Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 7 of the 1962 World Series, the New York Yankees versus the San Francisco Giants. Well, at the end of 7, the Yankees have one run on five hits, and they have no errors. The Giants have no run on two hits, and they have no errors. As Stanford gets ready to go here in the eighth inning, the giant bullpen comes alive again. Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, and Stu Miller, a right-hander, are throwing. They have been throwing along with Don Larson throughout the afternoon. Now, Bobby Richardson will lead it off. Bobby has walked twice and fouled to the first baseman. So, officially, he's over one in this game. Sanford gets ready. Here's the pitch to Bobby. He swings and hits a high hopper to the shortstop. But Don has it to throw to first. He is right at first base. The throw was up high. It got away from Cepeda. And Bobby Richardson is safe at first. It'll be an error. Charge it up to shortstop. Well, the Yankees have a runner at first base. Uh, no one out, and the batter will be Tommy Trace. Sanford taking a little time as he goes over to talk to his third baseman, Davenport, probably discussing the bunt situation that very definitely is in order there. The Yankees lead by one. We're in the eighth inning. Bobby Richardson at first base with no one out. And Whitey Ford is throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees. How about that? Whitey was a starting pitcher in yesterday's ball game. He's warming up today. Sanford gets that. Here's the pitch to Trace. Right, he got the fastball over the outside corner. Tommy squared around. He was ready to bunt. Pulled the bat back, and Stan Lambert went up to the right hand. Well, with Mantle and Merritt coming up, 
Manager Ralph Howe wants to move Bobby Richardson down in the scoring position. Sanford ready. Here's the pitch. Outside. Press is ready to bunt. One ball, one strike. Davenport is playing in close to third. Jimmy's about five steps in front of the bag and moves in as Sanford delivers. Cepeda holding against the runner and he'll move in with the pitch. Tommy Stress, batting left hander waiting on Sanford. Here's a 1-1 pitch. He bunts it as foul. This one is rolling behind the plate. One ball, two strikes. Tommy is trying to get the bunt down the first place line as Davenport is racing in from third. It would almost be suicide to bunt the ball to him. Fouls it back. One ball and two strikes. Bamford working slowly here in the eighth inning. Yankees with a one-run lead have a runner at first base, no one out. Here's the pitch. Outside, they set your swing just in time on a fastball that was off the corner. And we'll even the count at two and two. Mickey Mantle is waiting in the on-deck circle. Sanford checks his runner. The pitch. Outside again. Once again, Jack trying to thread the needle on the outside corner is missed. So it's three and two to try. Well, we'll watch the runner. He might be moving on his three-two pitch. Sanford has picked the runner off first base today, so Bobby Richardson, of course, is going to be mighty careful getting a lead. Sanford gets set. That's a quick throw to first. Bobby back in town. The full count to Tommy Stretch. A runner at first base, no one out. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner. Here's the liner. One hop to the shortstop. It gets away from him. Here's the throw to first. He's safe at first base. Stretch hit that one like a bullet. A low liner that hit right in front of Pagan. Bounced out of his glove over towards second base. He picked it up. Made the throw to first, but it was not in time to get Stretch. It'll be an infield single for Tommy. Base hit number six for the Yankees, puts runners at first and second with no one out. And the batter will be Mickey Mantle. Well, there's the value of moving on the 3-2 pitch. Had Richardson not been moving, he would have been an easy out at second base. But for Don, realizing he had no chance to get Bobby, hurried his throw to first base, but it was too late to get straight. So two on, no one out, and Mickey Mantle the batter. Mickey's over two in this game. He walked his last time. Sanford gets that. Here's a pitch to Mantle. Ball in tight. One ball and outside. Well, Davenport is playing in close to third. Jimmy's ready for the bar in case Mickey bunt. The Feta, Hiller, and Pagan are playing about halfway. They are not looking for the bunt. In fact, the Feta is deeper than anybody else on the infield. Sanford checks his runners. Here's a one and oh pitch. A swing and a foul. This one back into the crowd. One ball, one strike. The good thing about having a batter like Mantle at the plate in a bunt situation, you don't have to worry too much about a double play ball as Mickey has such tremendous speed. That doesn't mean he cannot hit into a double play, but the chances are against it. So instead of a bunt play... As in this situation, manager Ralph House can let Mickey swing away, thinking that he'll still move at least one runner up. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside. Ball two and strike one. Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, is still throwing in the bullpen, and Don Larson has replaced Stu Miller for the Giants. So it's Larson and O'Dell, a right-hander and a left-hander. Mickey Mantle right down on the end of the bat, waiting on Jack Sanford. There's two on with no one out here in the eighth inning. The Yankees lead the Giants by a score of one to nothing. They've out hit the Giants six to two. Bobby Richardson is down at second base. Tommy Trace at first base. Sanford gets ready. Here's the two-one pitch. A swing and a miss. A low curveball around the knees, and Mantle had a ripple on it. A ball two and a strike two down. Roger Maris is waiting in the on deck circle. Manfred 
Robert taking a lot of time. Looks down to Tom Howler to get the sign. Looks back to second to check his runner. Here's the pitch. Down low, he's got the curve in the dirt. Nice pickup by Howler, who went down on both knees to block it. So it's three and two to Mantle. Will the runners be moving on this three two pitch? We'll wait and see. It paid off for Ralph House when he had Richardson running on a 3-2 pitch to Craig. Oh, we'll check him again. Sanford checking the sign. Taking his head yes to Tom Howler. Here's the 3-2 pitch. There's a line of the right field. It's in there. Bobby Richardson coming to third, but he's going to be held up. Mickey Mantle lined the ball just out of the reach of the second baseman, Hiller. Now, Bobby Richardson had started back to second. He thought Hiller might catch the ball. So he was held up at third. So the bases are loaded with no one out, and here's Al Dart coming out. We might get a pitching change here. I believe we are. He is giving the call to the bullpen, and it's going to be Billy O'Dell. Sanford leaves the mound. And he has been a tremendous pitcher for the San Francisco Giants this year. Not only here in the World Series, but throughout the season. And they're giving him a standing applause as he leaves the mound. The Yankees have loaded the bases here in the eighth inning with no one out. An error and two singles have filled the sacks, and Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, will be coming on to pitch to Roger Maris. Will be Odell's third appearance in the World Series. He started the first ball game. He has a record of no wins and one defeat. He starts with a loss in the first game. He's pitched ten and one third innings, giving up twelve hits. Six runs have all been earned. He's walked three and struck out eight. Billy pitched in relief in the fourth game of the series and played that ball game. John Larson was the winning pitcher. So Billy completes his warm-up tosses. Roger Maris steps in. The base is loaded with no one out. The Yankees leading one to nothing. The hit by Mantle was number seven off Stanford. Yankees are out hit the Giants seven to two. Well, Al Dodge doesn't want to give up another run. He is playing his infield in close with the bases loaded and no one out. Maris is 0 for 3 in this game. Here's the first pitch. Elson Howard. Odell 
ball. Step in the sign. Here's the two-strike pitch. There's a ground ball at third, Mike. You can have a play. Stepped on the bag to throw. He's out. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC Radio Network. Hi, Pat Summerall. You know, the trouble with buying paint is that you really don't know how it's going to look or last until after you've painted. That's why True Value Hardware Stores make their own True Test paint. Regardless of your needs and budget, your True Value Hardware Store dealer can help you choose the best possible paint in the colors you want at the price you can afford to pay. His knowledge also extends to knowing which applicators will give you the best results from quality True Test paints, available only at participating True Value Hardware Stores. a classic World Series broadcast, Game 7 of 1962, featuring superstars Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris. <laughs> a Billy O'Dell coming on in relief with the bases loaded and no one out, turned in a sparkling job, got out of it without a run, so it's still a one to nothing ball game, the Yankees leading as they go into the bottom of the eighth inning. He's a leadoff man. He'll be followed by Jimmy Davenport, then Jose Pagan. Now <laughs> Perry taking a little extra time as he goes through his warm-up coffee. Action in the Yankee bullpen. But Jamie, a left-hander, and Bill Trafford, a right-hander. They have been throwing off and on throughout the ball. The Yankees lead. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning of the seventh game of the 1962 World Series. Tom Heller has popped his choice and bounced to the pitcher in two trips. Here's Terry's first pitch. There's a fly ball in the left center field. Price is placing in. He's there in the next pitch. Tom Heller goes out on the first pitch to stretch in left center. That's one away, and the batter will be Jimmy Davenport. Jimmy just made a fine play on a hard hit ground ball off the bat of Elson Howard. Just on third base, looked at the first, turning it into a fast double play. Jimmy has popped the second and flied to left in two trips today. Harry taking a little down. Down low. One ball at a strike. The Yankees picked up a run in the fifth inning. That's been the only scoring in the game. It's a one and oh pitch. High pop fly on the infield. Big boy, you're coming into foul ground, calling for it. He's there, makes the catch. Jimmy Davenport fouls to the third baseman. Well, there's two down. And Jose Pagan is scheduled to be the batter, but. We're going to get a pinch batter. I believe it's Ed Bailey. Check it to be sure. Ed Bailey, left handed hitting catch is coming on. Here's the announcement coming over to the front of the glass. So Al Dark trailing by one run here in the eighth inning, sending up a left handed batter for his shortstop for gone. Ralph 
chances are deep and around to the right for Bailey. That is strictly a pull hitter. He's out of the box for just a moment, just back then. Bobby Richardson right on the edge of the outfield grass. Here's a one strike pitch. He sets his swing on a low curve, says Sam Lambert. One ball, one strike. The Yankees have one run on seven hits and no errors. The Giants have no runs on two hits. They've committed one error. Still with the men. Helms the ball in his glove. Here's a 1 1 pitch. A foul ball is back on the screen. Terry coming in with a back ball around the letters. One ball, two strikes. Terry retired the first 17 batters he faced here today before Sanford singled with two outs in the sixth inning. And he gave up a triple to McCovey with two outs in the seventh inning. And the only two giant hits. One ball and two strikes to Bailey. Here's the pitch. Down low. That'll leave him to count at two and two. Terry trying to get Bailey to go for a bad pitch. Ed Bailey batting for Jose Pagan here in the bottom of the eighth with two outs and no one on. Ed getting out just as Terry got ready. Now we're ready again. Here's the two-two pitch. Foul ball. This one back in the crowd. Still two and two. In the fifth inning, the Yankees used two singles and a walk to load the bases. Then Kubek bounced to the shortstop for God, who made the double play. Cowan coming in to score the only run of this ball game. Yankees had the bases loaded in the eighth inning with no one out, but they failed to score. Here's the 2 2 pitch. There's a fly ball hit outside of first place. Gowan is coming over. He's got the room on it. Still chasing it. He makes the catch. Ed Bailey fouls to the first place. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of eight. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. And now, more action from Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. Well, it's the ninth inning here at Candlestick Park, and the Yankees are leading by a score of one to nothing. Boy, you couldn't ask for a finer ball game in the final game of the World Series. Bill Stallone will lead off for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Boyer and then Terry. Here's a fastball, a fast. One ball and a strike. Billy O'Dell, pitching in relief of Jack Sanford, who turned in another great performance here today in his third World Series start. The pitch in the dirt, scooped up by Allen. A ball two and a no strike count. O'Dell came on in the eighth inning with the bases loaded and no one out. He got Merritt on a ground ball to the second baseman. The play was made at the plate. And then Howard hit into a fast double play. Here's a 2-0 and pitch to Scowen. He swings and fouls it off. From sailing back into the upper deck behind the Giants, no doubt. That's a ball two and a strike one count. Now, Billy O'Dell didn't like the baseball. He wants a new one. Offers it in and Stan Landon sends a new one out to the mound. Moose is waiting. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Down low. That's the fastball. Low and in. 3 and 1 to Scowling. Odell taking a little time as he looks into Howard. Here's the 3 1 pitch. He swings and hits a long fly ball down the left field line that's serving foul and going back into the crowd. So oh, it's 3 and 2 to Scowling. Lead off man for the Yankees in the ninth inning. They lead the Giants one to nothing here in the seventh game. Boy, this is it. Right down to the wire. The new 
shortstop for the Giants here in the ninth inning is Ernie Bowman. Pagan went out for the pinch batter, Ed Bailey. And Ernie Bowman has gone in to play shortstop. Odell, taking a lot of time here on the 3 2 pitch. Ready? Here it is. A ground ball hit for the shortstop. Bowman has it. Here's a throw to first. He's out. Still scouring, no doubt. Starts to first. Away, and the batter will be Cletus Boyer. Cletus 2 for 3 in this game. He lined the right field in the third inning. Bingle to the fifth and again in the seventh. His single in the fifth inning was a key blow that sent Scowan all the way to third where he scored on the double play ball. Top of the ninth is one out with no one on. Yankees won, the Giants nothing. The pitch to Boyer said, hard to third, Davenport knocks it down. Here's the throw to first, he's out. Another good play by Jimmy Davenport. As Boyer sent a screamer down the third baseline, Jimmy blocked it. Ball rolled out in front of him, he picked it up, made the throw to Cepeda. A two down, and here's Ralph Perry.
Perry, taking a little time. He wants to be sure of his defensive alignment. He wants him to play a little. Here's the pitch tonight. Ball, it's outside. One ball and no strike. A one to nothing ball game, right down to the wire here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Here's the one and no pitch. A high pop fly outside of first base. It's made blow into the seat. Howard is chasing it. Now the dugout, he can't make a play. He went right into the giant dugout. Elson Howard, boy, was staying with it. He went right into the giant dugout all the way. But he couldn't quite make the play, so it's one ball and one strike to a lose. That ball at one time was near the foul line, but the strong breeze blowing kept tearing it away from Howard and just out of his reach. Third base is playing on the grass. Everybody else back on the infield. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Curve ball is too low. A ball two and a strike one count. Matty Alou in a pinch hitting roll in game number four at a key double down the left field line. Boy here, of course, has to play him in close. He's one of the fastest base runners in this series. Here's the pitch. He bounced down the first baseline. Terry Simpson really can't get it. Matty Alou dragging a bunt just past Ralph Terry. And he beats it out for an infield single. That's hit number three for the Giants. But the time run is first base with no one out. And the batter will be for Leafaloo. Uh, the Giants are looking for the bunt. The Warriors are moving in close to third base. Here's the pitch. He bunts it up in the air. Howard's chasing it. He can't get it. One strike to police. Giants, of course, trying to move this time run down to second base. We have Killer and Willie May coming up. The one to nothing ball game here in the ninth. The Yankees leading. Alou at first base. No one out. Matty Alou at first base. Philippe Alou, the batter, with a one strike down. There's a token toss over the first base. Terry just reminding the Lou that he's keeping an eye on it. Now, that's that. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it back. The Lou had a ripple at a high fastball. He was trying to drill that one by a boy here at third base. Fouled it back on the screen. But Terry is out in front with a strike two count. Elson Howard calls time, races out to the mound for a conversation with Terry. Bill Stafford, a right-hander, and Bud Daly, a left-hander, throwing in the bullpen. Howard coming back behind the plate. Terry gets that. Here's the pitch. A king and a miss, and struck him out. Belief for Lou goes down swinging. That's one away, and the batter will be Scott Hiller. Hiller is all for three. He bounced to first, flies to center, and he pops to the pitcher, trying to beat out a run in the seventh inning. Now, the Giants have one of their fastest base runners, if not their fastest, at first base. He's carrying the time run. One out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Boy, you can almost feel the tension all the way here to the radio booth. The pitch to Hiller. He swings and tucks it up. It's going to be out of play. This one is drifting back into the ground. One strike to Judd. Ralph Perry all the way for the Yankees. Jack Stanford. Starting pitcher for the Giants today. Billy O'Dell will lead him in the eighth inning. It's a one-strike count to Chuck Heller. 
Matty Alou at first base, one out, bottom of the ninth inning. Matty taking a big lead at first. Terry Captain, here's the pitch. He bursts down the third base line and foul. Boy, there was a dandy. Teller placed the bat down the third base line. He just rolled outside the line. Boy, you had no chance to get him. Wait was playing in close, but this was a perfect bunch. Oh, it's a strike two count to Hiller. Once again, Howard, out to the mound for a conference of spirits. Everything riding here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Howard's coming back behind the plate. Terry checks his runner at first. The pitch. Foul ball back in the crowd. Ralph trying to get the fastball by him around the letters. He'll have fouled it back. Well, oh, Billy Pierce is throwing in the bullpen for the Giants. They tie it up with go ahead. More than likely, he'll be the pitcher. Harry gets that. Here's the pitch. There's another foul ball coming back to the crowd. A strike two count to Chuck Hiller. The amazing thing about these pitches to Hiller with two strikes on him, Terry has come right in there with good fastballs. He is not trying to make Hiller go for a bad pitch. He tried to overpower him with two good fastballs, thinking that Duck had to be expecting most anything in this spot. Ralph taking the look in. That's the runner at first base. Here's the pitch. Foul ball. And off to the left, rolling to the Yankee dugout. You know the most helpless people in the ballpark in a situation like this are the ball players sitting in the dugout. There is nothing they can do, nothing at all, but just wait and hope. Those on the field or with a bat in their hand, they have a chance. They can do something. Scott Keller is choking the bat, waiting. Here's the pitch. In the dirt. Nice pickup by Howard. That was a big play. Giants would like to move a loo down to second base. It's a ball one, strike two count to Chuck Ellis. Matty Alou opened this inning with a buck single down the first baseline. Matty was batting for Billy O'Dell. Felipe Alou, after bunting and missing a pitch, swung at the next two and stuck out. Now Chuck Keller, the batter, one ball, two strikes. Harry delivers. A swing and a miss. He's stuck him out. Miller goes down swinging on a low curveball. So they two down and it's all up to Willie Mays. And I would imagine if the Giants fans had their way in the ball crowd, this is the man they wanted to play. A runner at first base, two out. And Willie Mays, the batter. He has been the big man for this ball club. Not only this year, but for 12 long years. <laughs> So it'll be Terry against Mays. And that is matching strength against strength here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Willie has fly to left, fly to center, and Ryan deep to left. Fred made a great play on him in the seventh inning to rob him of an extra base hit. Willie right down on the end of the bat. The pitch. Ball. It's inside. That's ball. One and over to Willie Mays. Matty Alou at first base for two outs. What everybody has moved forward on the edge of his seat. Here's the pitch. Fastball in tight. Almost hit him with this one. A ball two and a no strike count. Terry coming in with two good fastballs, trying to get Willie on the fifth. Got him in a little bit too close. The Yankees deep, around to the left, and very deep in the outfield. Warriors deep in near the line at third base. The pitch to Willie Mays. He swings and lines it down the right end of the line. That's what he did. Willie's on his way to second. The runner's going to be held at third base. Willie Mays has the base hit for the Matty Alou was held up at the last moment. It looked like he was going to make a try for it. 
Bobby Richardson took the relay from Roger Maris and rifled a throw into Elson Howard. One hop, he would have had it at the plate. And Whitey Lockman very wisely held him up. So the Giants have runners at second and third with two outs. Willie McCovey, the batter, and here's Ralph House coming out to the mound. George Kell and Joe Gergiola at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And this place is a madhouse right now. The Yankees lead one to nothing, the bottom of the ninth. The Giants have runners at second and third with two outs, and Willie McCovey is the batter. Willie's had one hit. That was a long triple. Here's a pitch. He swings it in the long belt in right field. Harris is chasing it. He's curling in foul. It's going in the field. Willie McCovey making a bit. Round one. He's from the right. The ball did not have a distance to get out of the ballpark. Maris going over near the line, but it's curved back into the crowd. Oh, it's one strike to Willie. And boy, everything is riding on every pitch here in the bottom of the ninth. McCovey fouled to the catcher, fly to left, and tripled in the deep center field. Big, tall, left-handed batter right down the end of the bat. Ralph Perry gets back. Here's the pitch to Willie. There's a line of straight to Richardson. The ball game is over and the World Series is over. Willie McCovey hit it like a bullet. A round drive right straight to Bobby Richardson at second base. And that ball got out of his reach. The Giants would have been the winners. Now it's the Yankees who have mobbed Ralph Perry in the center of the diamond. And well, they should. What a pitcher Ralph Perry was here today. He picked a four-hit shutout going right down to the bottom of the ninth. A line drive off the bat of Willie McCovey going straight into the glove of Bobby Richardson at second base. So in the bottom of the ninth, it's no run on two hits for the Giants. There were no errors, two men left. The final score of the ball game, the Yankees win it one to nothing. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And in this publication, rebroadcast or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Our engineer here today has been Don Hall. Our NBC producer has been Hal Ashby. And now to wind up this 1962 World Series broadcast, let's go down and pick up Joe Gary Viola and some of those victorious Yankees. Joe is down in the Yankee clubhouse right now. Joe, take over. Hey, we're in the Yankee clubhouse here. Ralph Perry, we finally got him. Yeah, you got him? Yeah. Yeah. Ralph Perry of the New York Yankees here right now. Uh, Joe, if you don't mind, I'd like to bring this to Ralph. Two years ago, a guy named Bill Mazzarossi hit a home run in the last half of the ninth inning to win a World Series. And here now is Ralph Perry, who came back two years later to uh, win the seventh game, and the skipper, Ralph House. Ralph, uh, you waited two years for that one. I'd like to say two things, Ralph. Well, I think I'm probably the luckiest man in the country today. The guy hit the ball so hard. Right, Andy? I thank God for his second chance. He really, he really did his job, I tell you, Mel, and uh, you really got to give these fellas a lot of credit. It, it was quite a spirit. Why? This is the greatest thing in the world right here. You know that great guy, my friend? Wonderful, Joe. It's a good place for me. <laughs> You're going to be resting for, for a while now? <laughs> All right. Why? We're ready to come back, huh? Well, yeah. I was asking if I wanted to throw a thing in you later, but they had, uh, we had a left hand down here in Stafford ready. This wasn't an easy one for you, huh? No, I wish we could end it yesterday, but uh, I'm glad the way it turned out. May I have uh, Joe Garrett Joe is just a word with a guy who has uh, been in the middle of a lot of these things, uh, sometimes on the winning side, sometimes uh, on the other side. Uh, Joe, good night, Joe. I named you for San Francisco, making his home back there now. Joe, well, I want to tell you now, it was a wonderful World Series, and I thought this, it, it wound up just the way I thought it was, just the last out. 
the Giants are a wonderful ball club, and just for that one line drive, made the difference for winning and losing. And I will say this is a typical year to see. Uh, as far as this particular club, why, as long as the kids are down, it seems like they pick them up. The 1962 World Series ended with the Yankees winning their 20th World Championship. How about that? And I'll be back with some closing words in just a moment. Mel Allen. Stan, you know, it was a Yankee tradition to come through with a win when the chips were down. And that's kind of what they did back in 1962. And it was a vindication for Ralph Perry. Yes, that's as far as, as you and I have said before, Ralph Perry two years before was the dope. And he came back to be the hero. I've always wanted to know from somebody, Mel, and can I ask you, I always wondered why Ralph House didn't have Willie McCovey perfectly passed in that ninth inning. The pitch to Orlando Cepeda, who wasn't particularly having a good series. That's a good question, Stan. When you take a batter like Willie McCovey, he's always dangerous. He's a guy that can beat you. But as long as your pitcher is going pretty good and you hope that he keeps the ball away from that man's power, you've got a better chance of striking out a McCovey than then you have a Cepeda. Cepeda also had power, but he could put the ball in play more frequently than McCovey. And left the chance of striking out the table. But fundamentally, here was the reason. Alou was on third and Mays was on second. There were two out. Now, if you want McCovey, now you're leading by only one run. That means you've got to get the ball over the plate somewhere to the next hitter. And in the process of trying to perhaps keep the ball a little fine or not making too good a pitch, you might walk that next batter and then force them the tying run which then would put the Giants in a position to uh, perhaps win it in that ninth inning. So he decided just, uh, according to the Yankee skipper, just tried to go ahead and take his chances with McCovey. And to prove that baseball is a game of injuries, McCovey almost won it. I've never seen the ball hit any harder. If he would have gotten up under that ball, it would have uh, wound up not only over the right field fence, but it wound up on some ship sailing by out in the bay and it <laughs> might have wound up in uh, the Orient somewhere. But uh, I talked to Bobby Richardson afterwards, and he said, that ball came to me like a bullet. And he said, I was just scared to death. It was going to bounce off my glove and hit me in the face and put me in a hospital. But uh, he said, fortunately, it came right at me, and I sort of gave with it. It's been an inch to just so either way, pure basis. And two runs would have scored on it. And the Giants would have won the world. Absolutely. But that's uh, the World Series, that's baseball, and you do take chances in a given situation. Sometimes it's the same to work for you, sometimes it won't. You know, Bobby Richardson tells me that sometimes he wakes up in the middle of the night with a nightmare. He dropped the ball. <laughs> Please try and fans and be with us next week as NBC Radio keeps baseball on the air with World Series facts. We really can't say if there's going to be a settlement in the baseball strike. I wish we knew something more about it. I certainly wish they would settle it. But as long as the strike does continue, NBC Radio will continue bringing you World Series Classic. Stan, what's on tap for next week? Next week, Classic World Series from 1964, 65, and 68 Mel. We'll be listening to games featuring the St. Louis Cardinals, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Minnesota Twins to the Detroit Tigers. And the New York Yankees stand on the I wouldn't do that, Bill. <laughs> As a matter of fact, for such a long while, it'd be pretty tough doing any World Series in which the Yankees wouldn't have been at least half of the fall classic. Uh, I remember, uh, for example, 1949 through 1964, the Yankees were in the World Series 14 times during the year, out of 16 years. This program is authorized under rights granted by Major League Baseball and is presented by permission of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. The recordings used on today's rebroadcast come from the archives of the Museum of Broadcasting and the Library of Congress. Our special thanks to Jerry Gibson and Ron Simon at the Library and Museum and to Catherine Lim at NBC Records Administration. Our historical advisors are Milt Richman of UPI, and the gentleman sitting next to me today, Stan Martin of NBC Radio Sports. This presentation of World Series Classics 
was engineered by Sherry Wagner and Steve Arthur, directed by Wendy Maxwell and Cassandra Pitters, and produced by Guy Ludwig. This is Mel Allen, along with Sam Martin, inviting you to join us next week for more World Series Fast. This has been a presentation of NBC's Radio 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah.